Welcome, everyone. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk about DJ tips, our favorite DJ tips that may be able to help some of you out there and some of you in the room. So we're just going to go around the room and share some tips. So let's see. I'm going to start with Eric. Oh, wow. Great. I get to open the show. Awesome. Thank you. Actually, you guys can't take my ideas then if I, if I start off, right? Right. 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 So, Howie, when you asked me, I thought, okay, what is something that I can share with everybody that maybe I've picked up that you guys haven't thought of? But I'm totally going to steal this from somebody you guys all know. DJ Scribble once said, know your music inside and out. Know where your drops are. Know where your transitions are. Know your beat changes. And I think that, you know, Scribble's been extremely, uh, you know, celebrated as as a mentor for all of us guys. We go and we watch him perform. And that's a great honor when you're a DJ and other DJs come to watch you do your thing. Um, and his tip to everybody was always, that, know your music better than, than you know anything else. And I think that that's a great tip for everybody to, you know, we don't play, what, what do we have, a repertoire of 400 songs maybe? That may even be inflated. But know those songs so well that you know everything about them. So I'm going to open up with that and... Uh, and that, that's all right. All Thank you, Eric. Tom. Hey, good evening. Hello, good Brian. Evening. Anything else? It's been a little hey, while. Tom. Uh, you know, I really don't have anything to say. I think uh, you guys have said it earlier, so I'll pass if you don't mind. All right. No problem. Scott. Well, I'll, I will say this is uh, the tip I can give everybody is um, – learn to think even outside the box smaller events you know micro weddings do them you know you can do three of those and make up for maybe one big one and that's what we've done this year with mm -hmm. everything that's happened we've been able to take the things that we normally would do you know 100 and something guests and narrow it down to 40 or 50 and everybody still had a great time so just just being able to downsize your events, everybody. Oh, by the way, hey Jay and Brian. Hey Scott. Alrighty. Thank you. Okay, Bill. Uh, thinking about this for me, one would be um, going kind of to the know your music, um, know alternative forms of the music. In other words, if you're doing a wedding and you have a groom who says, you know, I'm really into metal, I'm really into alternative rock. I know that's not going to work for my wedding. Be able to offer some cool suggestions, maybe of some covers of the, that type of music to use for cocktail hour or prelude for the ceremony. Things like vitamin string quartet, you know, are easily, you know, at the top of people's minds now. But there's a lot of other string quartet type versions. There's jazz versions. There's acoustic versions. At this point, covers have become kind of a whole new under the music industry industry that you can and you can find tons of stuff and you know you can have slayer and pantera at at dinner and it sounds like it's opera <laughs> awesome okay robin i'm gonna go with telling everybody to be safe and think about safety first Think about your wiring, not only because it looks nice when you do your wiring correctly and you tie everything down and you use gaff tape, but people don't trip over your wires. Think about your light up lights as you put them against the wall. Make sure they're not going to be, you know, kicked or somebody's going to fall over them. You're, you really need to think about safety. And I want everybody to think about safety when they set up because you want everybody to have a good time. Excellent. Okay, Brian. Always use the force. Ooh. Oh, I thought I called on Brian. I get I got Ben. Well, hear me out. <laughs> Hold on. Been been using the force for a long time. And somebody says things to you like, hey, man, you got your Slayer? And you can say back to them, 
No, but I've got some Def Leppard. Would that be cool? And nod your head as you're saying it. Mm-hmm. And they start saying, yeah, that would be cool. That's the force. These are not the droids you're looking for. The other thing you can do with this, and it's all suggestive stuff. It's sometimes how you respond to things or how you ask things that makes all the difference. When you're talking mm-hmm. to clients, sometimes they'll say things like, yeah, we're going to have uh, – our wedding is going to happen at four o'clock and then at five o'clock, we're going to start the dancing. Say, okay, do you feel like that you're going to have enough time between your wedding and dancing for dinner and a grand entrance? So you're not telling them they're wrong or it's a bad idea. You're Mm -hmm. making them kind of figure it out themselves, make it seem like it was their idea to adjust Mm -hmm. the times instead of Mm -hmm. telling them to be adjusting the times. Makes them feel better about themselves. Excellent. Now, Jay, I saved you for last because you 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 dropped some gold last night. Late it was four or five in the morning, um, and it had to do with uh, some with Serato. Now, some of the uh, um, controllers are coming with Serato. Okay, and I know what you're talking about. You you and they were like. Well, hey, I got free Serato. I went to a different place. I use a different controller and nothing's working. Tell us about that. Um, In the case of Serato in particular, they have a thing called Club Kit. Club Kit is $197, I think. You purchase a license. Really quick, if you buy a controller from any of the main manufacturers and it says comes with, bundled with, will open X software. What that means is that the controller will send a signal through USB to your computer when you have Serato open. Serato will say, ah, we'll work with that. The problem becomes, and I've seen it countless times, DJs will work with their controller, with their computer, then go to a club or a bar or another gig where someone else has gear, and they suddenly find that they need drivers or that their Serato just will not work with like CDJs and a mixer because they need to own a copy of it. Probably 90% of DJs that work with Serato don't own a license for Serato. If you didn't buy it from Serato, chances are better than not that you don't have a license. You have the ability to use it tied in with the controller but you don't actually own it. So you have to be really cautious. And, you know, just thinking of tips and tricks and things, you know, I I think it goes to the same thing I was going to say, which is simply, you know what? You, you got to treat this professionally from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. You do need to know that you can play Slayer during dinner on piano or on violin. You need to know your music inside and out. You need to step out of the box. It's not as prevalent today, but I remember walking through Disneyland and spending 20 bucks one night on two different CDs. One guy was playing like, oh man, I can't remember the name of it. Somebody help me on this. It's more or less with spoons and it's like a sideways guitar with lots of strings not a harpsichord but it's this kind of old-fashioned instrument but he was playing some metallica that i bought the cd and played it at a wedding a few weeks later and no one knew what it was it was some dude in disneyland you know if you go to lynchburg tennessee to see jack daniels plant and you hear some guys playing in the cafe and they have a cd and you like it five ten twenty bucks buy it support people in our industry who are entertainers. But mm-hmm. then when you get that bride or groom that goes, yeah, my dad's from Lynchburg, Tennessee. What, the music they were playing in Lynchburg isn't going to fit the event? Like, that's part of being professional to me. You're never late. You never drink at the gig. You right. never book two gigs on the same date at the same time. You, you stand up for your word. And if you've got to deliver more, you know, I mean, I remember years ago a band saying to me like you're only as good as your last gig and i firmly mm-hmm. believe that should jay I'm save not, some you know. tips around too <laughs> oh yeah that's good yeah, yeah. Around too. that's right I'm, I'm altering my list right now as we go 
I'm on to like number seven now. <laughs> and All right, I'll go. I'll go. Fade last. to black. I'll go. There, last did you go? Fade to black. I started. This, See, this so one long. here, I think this this here, I think will really help a lot of people because I know better <laughs> as a tech, and it happened to me. We haven't worked. Um, I haven't worked. Uh, it's nine months, and. I, I'm doing some beta testing for for uh, a company, and they wanted to have a meeting. And I was like, okay, sure. Um, I couldn't record it um, traditionally, so I thought, well, I'm going to use a task cam. You know, the Zoom makes them, you know, they got the two little microphones. I haven't used it. No, it's only nine months, but the battery compartment corrosion. One of the batteries was leaking. So I quickly cleaned that up with the uh, deoxid and, uh, and so forth like that. And then it, it occurred to me, hey, wait a minute. I haven't used my body packs. I haven't used my wireless mics. I went around and I took all the batteries out of everything, you know. Um, and that's just something I think um, it's worth looking into if, if you haven't worked that long and you have a wireless mic with a battery in it and it's, a you know, expensive thing yeah and so what i do is i have these plastic holders you can get them on amazon just put them in there they can't short out throw them in the bag I'm good to go so round two you want to go for a round two here you ever have a nine volt in your pocket on the quarter um <laughs> Nope, but I've heard that it's a lot of fun. It gets warm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shocked. What a compliment that would be. Is that a nine volt in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> are you just really nine, happy? nine volts are this long now, just in case <laughs> yeah. anyone's wondering. Yeah, Eric is the Erica. Is that yes. the pocket warmer for when you live up in Lake Placid there where it's, it's so cold? It's below zero right now. <laughs> I was just out in the shop and I, and I walked in. I said, man, is it cold? Three, Three below, below zero. zero. Below Dude. zero. Yep. Dude, it was 65 here today and I've got to get a flannel on. I mean, come on. <laughs> I walked out to the mailbox with nothing but shorts on today. This guy goes, what the hell's wrong with you? No. Oh, that's not a good tip. Don't take that as a good tip. Yeah. Uh, wear clothes so one that i will give um it's kind of i'm going to roll it into two it's going to be remember to hit the reset button between gigs so you know often we'll go thursday friday saturday night sometimes you're like oh i played that last night i don't feel like playing it tonight for us it's repetition and we, we you know you heard it again last the night before we heard it the night before that these people haven't Remember to hit that reset button and restart again, because what might seem stale to you playing it three nights in a row is not for these people who just showed up on their Sunday afternoon for their wedding. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I always think about. I tell my guys, like, don't forget, you know, last night's group was last night's group. We start over again today. And the part that goes along with this is I take very good notes. So if I'm in a job and sometimes you'll come up and, and I know it's happened to all of us where, you go, wow, well, I'm just going to throw this in and see if it works. You're like, wow, that went really well. They really dug this. I always write these down. And so with me, I carry, it's probably like six or seven sheets long of actually printed off material of little hot hits, like hot sets of four or five in a row. But sometimes you get you, you get stuck. You're like, man, what, what's going to go great with old time rock and roll? Bang. All of a sudden I look at my list and it refreshes my memory again. So and a lot of times before I start an event, I'll just read through the pages, read through. Okay. Okay. Just kind of get the juices flowing again. So that's my two tips and one. All right. Who wants to go next? I've got one for you. All right, Scott. Um, I label stuff and, uh, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not that guy from, um, is as OCD, but this label maker is a lifesaver. My Evolve 50s are even labeled. In case I mean, you don't know what they are. Evolve <laughs> 1 and Evolve 2. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't. The hell are these things? Thing? Oh, 
<laughs> Y'all well, looking like something needs to make some I sound. Remember. Well, no, I do that. I did that for a reason. My wife's like, she kept asking me, does it matter which one I plug in? No. Finally, I got tired of that question being answered or asked rather. So I labeled them where the base unit is number one, you know, and the top piece in the bag is number one on the bag and it's number one on the back of it. And I did both of them that way. Okay. And, um, I've, that's what I've, um, you know, and I've, I also label a lot of my XLRs on left and right on a lot of stuff. So it's easier to plug in. You know, we go in these places and it's dark as it's pitch. I even though I usually take my, uh, my little, uh, my little light with me, uh, my little welders or what do you call the, uh, Col Coleman, the other uh, light. I think it's, yeah. yeah. For and I wear that, but still, just you know, trying to label some stuff. You ain't got to label everything you got, but you know. And I, I even do it on some of the stuff, you know, so I know what makes it easier to hook up. And that's my tip to you. Usually, ready? Yeah, there you go. Well, take you got a, another one for us, Bill? Yeah, may I uh, screen share? Sure. Okay. So we all have you know, are, are different things that we might have, you know, certain accessories, you know, that, that go with it. Um, video screen, video projector, or whatever it might be. For me, it's my yard games or, you know, a, a lot of different things. Um, I like coming up with alternative methods of doing things. And a long time ago, I started using tool bags, you know, like the canvas tool bags for different things. And, being that we're at Christmas time and they're pretty cheap at stores right now. Um, you got these little 12 inch bags like this. Oh. This is at Home Depot. Um, these make great little kind of portable, you know, small wire bags, small accessory right. bags. Um, and like for my yard games, uh, one example, my, my connect Four. I keep an extra set of discs in it. I, I keep, now that you know we're, we're trying to keep safe and clean, I even have some sanitizer wipes, you know, that go in each bag. But I, I've probably got a dozen of these bags right now, with with a variety of different things in them. One bag's just a bag of clamps for lighting, and they're you know they're the extra clamps for when my O clamp isn't going to work on something. Um, you know, it's not like the clamp that would be with the light on a normal basis, so. Just a thought. Those are nice bags. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Harbor Freight has them. Um, I mean, everybody has them. You know, all those kind of stores have them. Sure. And they're usually around five bucks. And Well, especially at Christmas, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we use those for our trussing for the pins and clips. One hammer mm -hmm. goes in each bag. Yeah. Nice. You know, just you. puts a few yeah. in there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you guys Excellent. have expensive stuff, try the Harbor Freight Pelican style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That are waterproof, shockproof. They're full of foam. Mm -hmm. I mean, valuable camera, microphones, anything electronic that you don't, if you drop it six feet, is going to be okay. And they're like a quarter the price of a real Pelican case. Like and bucks or and something. do it with a 30% off coupon. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we pioneer. I got pioneer to switch over all of our travel stuff to the Harbor Freight Pelicans. I think we have yeah. thirty of them now. And you mm -hmm. just, if you need to, you can put a zip tie through to lock it. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah. Great tip, Jay. Brian, you got one. Uh, use the force. Oh, I did we do that one already? All over again. Uh, we may have. I can't okay. remember. Well, try try this one. The one. Thing that I've always tried to do since my early days of working at the multi app. Play is, more prints? Oh. Yeah, play more prints. <laughs> Under promise, over deliver. The reason that's such a big mm. deal to me is because I noticed that this company I used to work for when I was a teenager would always tell the client how wonderful we were and show these pictures that were staged of our things looking neater than they would ever be. And it, it was always a disappointment 
whenever you go in there, they expected this big thing and you would show up and it wasn't quite the thing they thought they were going to get. So it's always worked really well for me. It worked really well for me when I was a young DJ and I would walk into a room and they would look at me and say, ah, oh, he's young. He doesn't know what he's doing. And then I would do a really good job. They were surprised. Today, it's kind of the same thing being disabled when I limp into a room. They're like, oh boy, what's this? Don't make a lot of noise, you know, smile politely at people. But as soon as that microphone comes on and I say something, and as soon as I start dropping tracks, they're surprised. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is this is not what we thought it was going to be. And then the sound that comes out of the Evolve systems, the light show that happens with just the little stuff that I use, it's not this, you know, big giant rig. It's a small thing, but it's got impact. Mm -hmm. So I like doing that. I like doing it with clients and the meetings. I love doing it with audiences. It served me well just, just to, you know, keep those expectations relatively low. I mean, you know, not that you're going to be bad, but not that it's going to be crazy good and then really bring it. Uh, I think it, I think it serves me well and, and it's a pleasant surprise for the audience. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, Jay was really impressed with the uh, with the ape light she brought in Vegas. Like, whoa, wait, yeah. <laughs> um, this is a lot better than I thought it was going to be, kind of thing, you know. I mean, that oh, was like, yeah, you underpromised, <clears throat> and blew it out of the water. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah. They're nice, you know. And then, yeah. right, uh, the look at all the amazing, they're the best thing ever. <laughs> and then you get there, and it's like, ah, eh, they're okay. So you know, keeping those expectation levels at yeah. a, an attainable place and then exceed exceeding them serves me well you know great well i guess my tip um i i don't remember if i got this from you or not brian but i went through um it was a couple, couple of years ago i have uh redundant everything i two laptops identical you know uh the spare hard drive spare cables you know the, the usual and i i i i did it like a mental inventory and said what don't i have doubles of that that could wreck a show and what it was was do i have a laptop power supply and I was like, wow, when I got the new laptop, I was like, I bought the laptop and a spare power supply at the same time to have. Can you imagine just like not, you know, like, you, you know, you get two hours out of your laptop and, oh, I don't have another power supply. You know, I was I like, that happen. Yeah. you did have that happen. I, was I, I just did. Is did I get that from you, Brian, years ago or no? I, I don't know. I I think I've always I've had one for at least ten years, a backup yeah. for at least ten years. Yeah, because I've only I, it was like five years ago. I was like, oh my gosh, because I it did happen. It. Like yeah. Eric said, it happened to me, and I was like, wow, I am so glad. I and what it was, it always it frayed at the end. You know how you're packing to, yeah. to get out, and I'm like, oh my gosh, up. Oh, <laughs> Not to worry, I have a spare on it. And boy, I tell you, as soon as I got home, I was on Amazon and I wanted it in two days. Yeah. You know, and I got I got a third one. <laughs> I remember having one that worked, but for some reason in certain venues, I would get a hum in the system. Mm. And then when I would unplug the laptop power supply, the hum would go away. Mm -hmm. I think I had two power supplies one was a two prong one was a three prong when i used the three prong with the ground on it i didn't get the hum oh very cool so it worked but created the ground loop so then i i went to the other one but yeah a little you never know you never know right right we well, gonna let jay go again yes we are because we still have i have a know, few yeah we have some Believe time it or not. Left, so well and it's I think it's, it's more interesting to me sometimes to listen to other people's and kind of base what you do. Cause without the communication, you can't pick up on anything. You know, mm -hmm. Eric's talking about taking all these notes and my tip for that would be what I've been doing for a couple of years now 
if I have a good set, I go back after the gig and I take the history yep. in order and I put it in a crate below the crate from the event. So if the crate from the event is Brian's wedding, underneath it, I put a sub crate called, you know, Brian's party. Or if it was like, you know, middle age fun people, I'll put middle age fun wedding. Are you and that way when I'm at another wedding and I go, damn, this crowd reminds me of that wedding I did for that guy, Brian. Let me go, oh, I played this and this and this and this and this. And it allows you to kind of evolve because what happens is you switch up the future wedding. So your new history crates are different than your old ones. Then you discovered that the, the middle-aged fun wedding and Brian's wedding were the same event. And they both took Ooh. place in hell <laughs> on a cold day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or but it's like even you, you saying about the, and, and I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. I think it's a, a longstanding standing. You know, I remember coming into the industry and you would hear the, the suit and tie guys at Mobile Beat talk about exceeding expectations. And I'm like, yeah, but shouldn't you walk in the room and already be really kind of like loud and all that? And I totally agree with Brian. I think you need to give them a level of professionalism mm -hmm. with the understanding and the wink of an eye. Don't worry, because when I get there and we've had this talk in the chill room, I did an event years ago where mm -hmm. I was much fairer skinned than everybody on a boat and it's a boat and they came on and they were like hey how's it going you're the dj and by the time the 150 of them were on the boat people were like do you mind if i go back to my car man i can get you some cds i'm like no no i'm good we gave our safety announcement we pulled away from the dock and i opened with the isley brothers between the sheets and like everyone just kind of turned around and we're like oh okay okay you get us i'm like yeah yeah no i and i had the same kind of arms folded like you have no idea. I totally get who you are. Don't worry. I'm not going to be an ass. I'm not going to mess this up. Don't worry. But you look at the investment people make in events. I mean, we've probably all done how many six figure <laughs> events. I mean, Eric's up there doing stuff that's probably seven figures. That's a lot riding on a DJ that could mess everything up. And every, you know, Howie's talking about extra power supply. I think I showed you guys the other night. I have a little magnet I bought at the Apple store for $10. Mm -hmm. And what it will do is take an old Apple power supply that's probably 40 bucks and let me run a brand new MacBook Pro with it. So I not only save money, but I have a way of switching wow. gears. It's like having the lightning and mini adapter. So wow. you go to your wedding and your client goes, hey, can you play this off my phone? It's my dad singing and he passed away. Yeah, give me your phone. And they hand you a phone with a lightning connection. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So you buy for $8 the lightning to female mini, plug the mini to RCA to the line, and now you can play any device. You know, I, I think it's, it's constantly growing. You know, I remember talking to Brian eight years ago and saying, I got this idea for DJ tips in under a minute. And he's like, good, good. Go with that. You got to do something to be helpful. And I think that that's probably the tip. Tip is be helpful. Be helpful mm -hmm. to other DJs because once mm -hmm. we're all super professional and really doing it the right way and making a great living, those of us that have been around longer will probably go up the ladder a little further. And this is a profession. And it's sad that we don't treat it the way it deserves. You don't have to wear a suit. You don't have to drive a fleet of vans. Do it any way you want, but just be professional at the end of the day, you know, when it's all said and done, you know? I mean, and just ask for other DJs' tips, literally. I mean, I, I could mm -hmm. learn from everyone in this room from now till next week. Scott Carroll alone could tell me mixes and things he's done in his career that I've never done, you know? Same with Brian, same with Howie. Everyone in here has, offers something. How amazing that we're so fortunate to have a job that we can make a living at and have fun and yet still yeah. constantly evolve. How many times, you know, if the drain is plugged and a plumber comes in, he may know a shortcut, but it's the same drain that's in every sink and it's probably the same plug. But with us, it's never the same. I've never done the same wedding twice. I really haven't. And I don't think any mm -hmm. of us have. So You're from the same family, right? Yeah, I've done. Th yeah. I've got one coming up. I just got hired yesterday for August. He was an officiant at a wedding I did for his cousin in October of 2019. He
He was a groomsman October 14th, 2020. And his girlfriend went to both weddings. He just got engaged. And I'm the second vendor outside of the venue that he hired for the day. Wow. So now his cousin's wedding with her 250 family members, there's only going to be 80 at his, but I'll see her and her family. I'll see people that, you know, they've seen. I know going into it, I have to do better than the last two, but I also have to do it in a way that it all flows. You know, that's the joy of it. I mean, if, if our jobs were twisting mm-hmm. a bolt and a nut, you know, what are we going to talk about? Right. I don't know why, but I got a feeling Robin has another tip. I'm sure she does. She is very clever. I'm gonna a better tip is that better. love hurts. Yeah. I'm going to go with batteries for 100, Howie. Batteries for a hundred. <laughs> okay. I mean, your tip on batteries was great because that will definitely save somebody hundreds of dollars taking the batteries out after you're using something. That will mm-hmm. definitely save somebody a lot of money. But there's something that a lot of people are doing right now because they're not working and they bought all these rechargeable battery gear, all the gear, all the equipment, all the up lights. And they're sitting. You need to recharge all your LED lights, anything that's rechargeable, uh, your your Bluetooth devices, anything that has mm-hmm. a rechargeable battery in it. Recharge it at least once every three months. I'm going to ask the techs in the room. Die on you. What? Just because I'm curious, Robin and Howie, between the two of you, you'll have the right answers, and both of you probably have the same answer, but. Where should we store batteries at between 50 and 100 percent? The rechargeables, the, the new ones, it really doesn't matter. The lithium, we're you know, we they will start draining, they have a little thing in there that starts draining them, okay? Right, right. yes, but the main thing you don't want to do is drain it down to zero, right? Just don't go to zero because then you lose memory, right. Uh, no, it, it doesn't have to do with memory. It just, uh, they won't, you have to, there's ways to trick it with resistance mm-hmm. to force it to start taking a charge. Mm-hmm. But if it's at zero and it it doesn't sense that it's charging, it, it'll, it'll tell the charger, hey, we're not getting any feedback. Well, of course you're not getting feedback from the battery because it's all the way at zero. But if it has something in it, you'll get feedback okay. to the smart charger. Gotcha. And it says, okay, go ahead and start trickle charging this thing. Gotcha. Um, and I might add to it, there's a lot of this around. I've seen it in uh, the Facebook um, ads and so forth um, where people are saying, hey, you got an Apple device? We got this thing that'll charge it four times faster than the original Apple charger. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. You will definitely, without a doubt, kill your battery much quicker by fast charging. If you can look every once in a while, hey, look, uh, you know, I got I got to get on the plane. I need to charge. Okay, you know, fast charge once in a while, but this fast charge all the time, you will kill that battery much, much quicker. You're better off with with the slow charge or the original charger that came with it. Or not Apple products. They tell you or not, yeah. Well, yeah, that's us. <laughs> oh that's right. I'm in the Android room. I forgot. Howie, no, you're question. in the ASUS room. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Howie, I have a question on that. Do they say that you should run your phone up to like 80% and not 100? You know, stop it at 80? I've heard that before, too. Uh, well, I mean, you hear 80, 90, uh, even 95. Um, you know, your, your, your phone, at least mine does, and it's not an Apple one. It just says... Hey, you know, um, you've been plugged in too long. You know, I mean, it it actually comes up and says, "Hey, even my Asus, my new Asus says you've been plugged in too long." And there's a setting you can go to in the computer that um, that won't let me go over ninety five percent. At least with Asus, I can't speak for other Androids, but um, I mean, yeah. 
I went you know, to the manufacturer of the batteries website, Howie, and they suggest that, you know, you go ahead and charge it to 100%. Just don't leave it plugged in all night. Exactly. Oops. Exactly. Within a few <laughs> minutes, it goes down, to, you know, it goes down by accepting your uh, Facebook messages and everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look a half hour later, it's down 93% already. Yeah, I I don't really worry with this uh, Samsung here because when I charge it up, um, I'll go into what's co called device care, and it says that you have uh, two days and four hours of battery life left based on your usage patterns type of thing. And yeah, I took this thing to Vegas. I had 100% charge. I put on the wireless headphones that were bluetooth 5.0 and um you know i i flew back listened to music on the phone and it was five and a half hours and i still had 70 percent battery life so um yeah just um but the i mean the phones were you know we use them every day but yeah stuff that's been sitting because we haven't been working robin's right yeah you know uh, top those things off once in a while. Yeah, just uh, whatever you do, don't let them go to zero. Otherwise, you'll be sending it to a tech uh, yeah. or bringing it to the Apple Genius Bar, and they'll tell you, oh, I'm sorry, you'll have to buy a brand new one. The electric goes out using uh, night light, <laughs> the room light. What do you got there? thing we talked about last week, at least with Apple, and I'm sure you guys, what are you guys using? Mabutu or Linux? When you got ice cream or chocolate fountains or whatever. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have this. You're allowed to set it so it has do not disturb, which means yes. it will only allow phone calls from your favorites, which is usually your family. Mm -hmm. If there's an emergency and someone repeat calls, it'll push it. It mm -hmm. won't give you any texts or notifications. So mm -hmm. I just put it on now to show you guys, but at 11 o'clock till 6 a.m., my phone goes into this sleep mode. I can listen to the radio. The other thing is this, which, and if you don't know this, I'm sure you guys have it as well. I only learned this a little while ago. Sometimes when I go to bed, I'll want to listen to, like, you know, iHeartRadio to our Boston radio station. Mm -hmm. And I found that you can actually set your timer so that when the timer goes off, it stops playing. So if you're playing YouTube, iHeartRadio, Sirius, anything, even a song, anything that's playing on your phone, if you set your timer to stop play, it'll automatically kill whatever you're listening to. So you don't have to worry about the volumes. You don't have to worry about you fall asleep. It's still going. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cool feature because, again, you don't want, you know, the thing blasting all night. Did Jay just Max explain some stuff to us? I think so. I think so too. What did I do? Max Blaine. <laughs> Who's Max Blaine? It's a superhero. It's a Marvel series on Netflix. Oh, yeah, you got me there. Nope, no time for that stuff. That's on Android. <laughs> Is it on Android? Okay, well, that's why. Of course, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Did we switch from DJ NTV to cell phone NTV? <laughs> yes, I think we so, did. Perhaps. Okay, just all check. right. Did, does anybody uh, have anything else they want to uh, put in there? Go ahead, Eric. Okay, so Jay. Yes. Uh, I was talking about me taking notes. You said you will grab the notes at the end, the history, and yeah. put it in its own folder. Does yep. that drag the songs with it? Every one of them. Not only drags them, it drags how long you played it and the actual order that you played every song. So I can go back into that folder, that crate. Yep. yep. And the songs are there to start dragging in. No, you go into your, in Serato, you go into history. History. Right. And it actually keeps every gig you've ever done. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know and that. And then you go to that date. Yeah. And then you highlight those songs. Like, so if you want the whole thing from beginning to end, you highlight you make sure you click the number column so it goes one to a hundred, whatever. Yep. Mm -hmm. Highlight them and then drag it to a crate. Or if you just want the dancing section, you go down and you can see because it'll actually tell you what time you played the song. Sure. So if dancing starts at seven, six fifty nine, you take that song, highlight everything till ten, 
drag it to another crate, new crate, call that crate, whatever you want. No, I have like EDM weddings, fun 30 weddings, yeah. Latin weddings, whatever. But does that drag just the data or does that? No, drag it the drags song? the actual song. Now there, we talk about finding that one piece of gold. There it is right there for yeah. me tonight. Mm -hmm. So you literally, there it is. Yeah. Stuff <laughs> down. yeah, no, you, yeah. you could literally, bro, you could go to your computer now. Yeah. And go, I did that event back in July on the 10th. It's the only event I did pull up history, find the 10th, go through even it, find the song. History? It's going to be in your history. It'll still be there even though mm -hmm. I clear the, Here's the only catch, 20. Here's the only catch. Right. You have to use the original hard drive and the sure. original computer. Yeah. That's so fine. if you take another computer and plug in the, an external hard drive, it won't see all your history because the history is saved on the drive and the yep. computer to be one. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. You, the a specific computer and specific drive that goes with mm -hmm. it. So. You could literally sit down with your guys one night, get everyone to bring the computer and the drives they use and say, you know, let's, let's, let's brainstorm some songs. Well, I had this event, it was a sweet 16 and this is everything I played in order. It was good, but I remember there was a lull when I played this. Okay. Yeah. Delete that song, add another song. Mm -hmm. You can make a new crate from an existing history crate and fine tune it and tweak it and do whatever you want. It is now 1047. Guess what I'm going to be doing at like 1052. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a figure this out. There and you know what? Pulse got me onto it and a couple other DJs because I said something about, man, what a great wedding last night. And I remember a couple of years ago, Pulse saying, Will you make a history crate? I'm like, No. He goes, Oh, I do it now for every event. I'm like, Really? He goes, I make a sub crate for every single yeah. event and I call it dancing. So we'll so go back I and go review in. it. What's but that? We'll go back and review it and look at what worked, what didn't. I right. didn't realize you could drag it in and it brings the songs with it. Yeah, the songs, the hard, the actual files go with it into the new crate. Nice. Yeah. So it's mm. in order. So like I said, if you're playing, this is how we do it. And you're like, I'm so sick of playing Usher, yeah, next. Yeah, what yeah. did I play that one wedding? You go to that crate and go, oh, I went on a Latin kick and I played Celia Cruz Carnival. Oh, let me try that tonight. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, that is a good tip. That it's that learning from the past brutal. kind of thing. Hey, Howie. Very cool. Yes, sir. Got one for you. All you right. Go you go out to start up your vehicle. You're all ready to go, and it doesn't crank. <laughs> oh, I read your post. <laughs> yeah. Have equipment that you can fit in another vehicle. This, this is all I had. You make it work? To make it work. I fit the Evolve 50s in the back seat. Oh, yeah. I slid yeah. the facade in between that. I put mm -hmm. the folding tables in the trunk and the smaller controller so mm -hmm. that I could end up with this. No, mm -hmm. it's not my event table. But guess what? It worked. And yes, mm -hmm. I had that trunk slap full. But just a tip, be prepared if you need to pull equipment out that you would normally take that would fit in a bigger size vehicle. Have something that you can downsize with, guys. Think mm -hmm. about it. It well, happened do, to be sad. Do a run through. Like, huh? Do a run through. I had my van broke down yeah. one time. I had to take my Stratus. Everything fit. But I had enough time to set it up. But in hindsight, I should have tried to make it all fit ahead of time to make sure just in case. Just well, it wasn't, case, it wasn't, is this going to fit? It was like, I had done that before because that's not the first rodeo that I've been through. But I did a practice run on loading vehicles when I had some yeah. downtime to see what I could get in them. And people were amazed. You got all that equipment in that Rio? done it before i've had i've had two uh zlx 15s in the back seat of that of that car before almost want to send it to kia show it loaded up with but stuff but just that's no, a good tip send it to time. evolve send it to ev loaded up yes yeah. that's what i i really need to do because uh, i have all their stuff i need to try loading all their speakers in that car but that's well, my tip for you guys. Go I ahead. think that yep. that's an old school tip. I mean, those are the kind of things yeah. that we used to have to think about back in the old days. Yes. Now it's not as much of an issue because everything's so compact. But I remember, like, 
the first vehicle that I had planned to use, I didn't. By the time I did my first gig, I bought a pickup truck. But when I was building my system, it was a, it was a two door seventy eight uh, Cutlass Supreme. Nice. So I'm like, okay, I got to get two speakers in there. Fifteen inch speakers is what we used at the time, mm-hmm. and I got to get these racks in there, these cables, you know, everything. So I had it. It was like you know Jenga, putting everything in this car, front seat. Well, trunk, wait a minute, not not Jenga. You should be using Tetris, yeah, you because know, it's old school. Mm-hmm. Tetris, Use an old yeah. school game, Tetris. <laughs> yeah, not Jenga, you're right? It's you got Tetris. Yeah. City sitting on your lap. <laughs> yeah, I had an amp well, rack in the front seat. Well, <laughs> well, that's what I mean. <laughs> you know, speaking of which, you know that Vegas was like that. Um, when we were out there in February, um, John and uh, Jeremy Lansby loaded that van three times to get the Tetris thing and what they could drive out there. And it's a good thing that they did because then he got a hold of me and said, hey, Howie, here's what I can't bring. This is all that'll fit. And then I had to design the light show around that. Oh, oh, well, yeah, I thought you told me you were bringing 30 of those. Oh, okay. Now we're down to 20. Okay. No problem. I can make it work, you know, but, um, you know, they, you know, well, I, Jay said it earlier. Yeah. Uh, practice and it's old school stuff that, yeah. Anybody yeah. remember those, those car bubbles that went on top of cars for luggage? And oh my gosh! Yeah, there was a DJ that I knew who had one of those on his car, just mm-hmm. to get everything in there. Mm-hmm. So the turntables and stuff would go in the car bubble, and then oh, that would scare deal. me. I would oh, oh, it's oh, what we, you had. It's what you had. You know, <laughs> we we have a Thule gray rack for the Volvo Connor, and that was Connor's thing to me was like, look at this. I got it for a hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah. He goes, you could totally fit all your gear in this. I'm like. It's ratchet strapped to the roof. Uh-huh. Right. Like, <laughs> no, honey, I appreciate the thought, but no, it's not really going to work for me. He goes, no, dad, you can totally live off land with this. I'm thinking of cutting the roof and then you could actually go up into it. So you could load it back. I'm like, no. Cutting <laughs> no. <laughs> the roof. <laughs> I appreciate the thought. Well, I'm driving a Brian mobile now and I realized today looking behind me, I think I'm going to be touring backline for Aerosmith when this whole thing ends, just throwing it in the Yukon. Yeah, air tip. Everybody needs a Suburban. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Looking what? at a Ford Flex. Those are nice. Those are nice. Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Spence yeah, Jimmy's got, got one. one. Spence got one, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. you know what? I think as we get older, I certainly know, and when Brian said about the 15-inch, I remember the PV 15-inch I had from the 80s, and they were that plywood that weighed i don't know tons 60 mm-hmm. and and i i mean we literally every time we moved them they were the ones that had the 50 18 15 inch black widows that weighed a million mm-hmm. pounds yeah and mm-hmm. then the horn right above it yes, and it was like my boss was like you know can you move those i'm like i have a hyundai excel no you can't get them in one door. He goes, well, we'll need to get a van. And the company bought a van and we used to put them in the van. And people be like, what are you doing with those? I'm like figuring out who's going to help lift them back onto the boat. Cause you know, and I'm like, wow, if I was a mobile guy, I'd be either buff or in traction. Like, I don't know how Scott and you and everyone else, I'll be blunt. I never did the turntable scene, how you guys carried records and 45 pound turntables under all leverage is still a mystery to me. It's all leverage. You you would, you would basically (laughs) lean back and carry them. Like it's a balancing act. It's all leverage. It's the same way. We do them at the shows. And I'm like, and the first time I had to move, first time I had to move turntables at a show, I turned around and I said, you guys carried these at every gig. They're like, Oh yeah. I'm like, why? These things are, they weigh like 50 pounds. Like, yeah, yeah, well, you know, then what about crates? You have like 10 crates of records. And I'm like, that's the hard part. Holy shit. If you've mm-hmm. ever seen a concrete crew carry concrete with a wheelbarrow. Yeah. That's how we did it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you're le- yeah, you're leveraging off everything. You're, you got to leverage it off. Mm-hmm. It's all wow. leverage. I'll tell you guys, my hat's off to you. Cause I'll tell you, I, my spine would blow out. 
I didn't even think about that <laughs> crap back then. I was so damn excited to get it's started. And start right. Using it. Did I didn't it. give a rat's behind. We just, we just did it. I just there you did go. it. Yeah. Well, you know what? And you know what, Brian? You didn't have a choice. No. Well, of course when you, you had When a you choice. don't have yeah. an option, it doesn't bother you. You can go work at right. Target, but nobody yeah. wanted to do that. If there's no hot water, the cold shower doesn't hurt because there's yeah. no other right. option. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess that's going to end it for us for tonight. So you guys can have your show next. So, oh yeah, that. Thank you all very More much. Show. Thank you, Howie. We'll Thanks, see Howie. you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Howie. Thanks, have buddy. a good night. Thanks,